Hi, today we're going to talk about two different kinds of polarizations in, in electromagnetic waves, the transverse electric and the transverse magnetic uh, polarizations. The first case is when the incoming electric perpendicular part of the wave is equal to zero, while the second case is when the incoming perpendicular magnetic part of the wave is equal to zero, or in other words, the, the parallel electric part of the wave is equal to zero. From that, we will derive the Fresnel equations, and finally, we're going to see one application, which is the Brewster's angle. As you recall, a light propagates through a medium with index of refraction N1 and hits another medium with index of refraction N2. Light will get both reflected and refracted. When light strikes an interface, the angle is measured normal to the plane of the interface. Therefore, following the law of reflection, the incident angle is equal to the reflective angle. However, uh, the transmitted angle, or the refractive angle, follows the law of refraction, or Snell's law, which is the ratio of the relative index of refraction and the sign terms of each of them. As you recall, we derived these equations in lecture 20, which are just the relationship of the incident part of the wave, the reflected part of the wave, and the transmitted part of the wave. So we'll explore two cases of polarization, the transverse electric, which is polarization perpendicular to the plane of incidence, and the transverse magnetic, which is polarization parallel to the plane of incidence. For the transverse electric case, the perpendicular component of the electric part of the incoming wave is equal to zero. Therefore, looking at equation one, this just becomes zero equal to zero, it cancels out. And equation three is going to govern how the electric part of the wave behaves. For the second case, the transfer magnetic case, the parallel component of the magnetic part of the incoming wave is equal to zero. Therefore, if we look at equation two, this one is just going to be zero equaling to zero. And equation four is going to govern the magnetic part of the wave. This graph illustrates the case of polarization perpendicular to the plane of incidence where the electric field is pointing outwards. We want to modify equation 4 such that instead of having the parallel components of the magnetic field, we have the magnetic field in, in, instead. We can do this by knowing that the magnetic field components are, are a vector, but we can always rewrite a vector as a sum of two other vectors, as the one parallel to the plane of incidence and the one perpendicular to the plane of incidence. By simple geometry, we can see that theta i is equal to this angle here, and we have to also note the direction where the vectors are pointing. The magnetic field direction in the, for the incidence is pointing downwards, for the reflection is pointing upwards, and for the tra transmitted case is pointing downwards again. With this, we know for one, that this term is the cosine term of the magnetic field, and we can change equation 4 Therefore, the equation has changed in this way. We have taken the cosine terms of the magnetic field, and we have added uh, negative signs depending on the direction where it's pointing at. So this is the equation that we just derived. We're just taking the cosine term out, outside, and we are changing the negative sign. Therefore, we have the incident term positive and the reflective term negative, as opposite from here and the uh, transmitted term positive and we want to move the perme permeability over to the other side the cosine of the incident angle to the other side and we make this first uh, definition where the cosine of the transmitted over the cosine of the incident is equal to alpha and now we want to change the magnetic field in order to have an electric field we know a very useful identity which is 1 over the velocity in the medium times the electric field is equal to the magnetic field. We're going to apply this and we're going to get 1 over V1. V1 is the velocity over the first medium. And now instead of having the magnetic field, we're going to have the electric field. So we're going to have E over... And this is going to be equal to V1 over V2. Now we're going to use alpha and 1 over v2, the velocity over the second medium and the electric transmitted. 
So we changed the magnetic field into electric fields using this definition. And we know that both the incident and the reflected part of the waves are in the first medium, while the transmitted wave is in the second medium. Now what we want to do is we want to move dp1 over to the other side, and we're going to use Snell's law. And the, the ratio of the velocities is given by the sine of the incident angle over the sine of the transmitted angle. And using again Snell's law, we get it's equal to the inverse ratio of the refractive indexes. And we do this to get a new definition where the ratio of the permeabilities and the inverse ratio of the refractive indexes is now defined as beta. Now we're going to use the definitions in order to change our previous equations. If you notice, I changed the velocities for the index of refractions n1 and n2 in order to use the definition of beta. And using the cosine of the transmitted term and the cosine of the instance term, we have alpha here. So we arrive with this new equation. Now we're going to use uh, our previous equation, the relation of the parallel components of the electric field, in order to arrive with a new relationship. Now this is equation 3 that we saw earlier before. If you, if you recall, now the perpendicular components of the electric part of the wave is equal to zero. Therefore, we are just dealing with the, with the parallel components. So the parallel components are, is what, what determines the electric field. And we can do two things with this set of equations. We can either add them, which is going to eliminate the reflective term, or we can subtract them, which is going to eliminate the incident term. If you recall, this equation comes for our first, fourth equation. Well, this is our third equation that we had before. And to begin with, we're going to add these two equations uh, in order to eliminate the reflective term. So by doing this, we're going to... So we want to find the dependence of our transmitted wave with respect to our incoming wave. So in order to do this, we... And this is how our transmitted wave behaves depending on how our incoming wave is. And this is our first Fresnel equation. So now we're going to subtract the 3 from 4 in order to get our second Fresnel equation. So if, yeah, and we're going to eliminate the incoming wave. So by doing that, and we want to find the dependence of the reflective term with respect to the incoming term. Therefore, we're going to use the first Fresnel equation that we got in order to derive this. And we're going to replace the transmitted term in both of these. We're going to sub in for it. So, this is our second Fresnel equation, we have, which has the dependence of the reflective term with respect to the incoming term. So, this is our pair of Fresnel equations. If you notice, our transmitted wave is always in phase with our incoming wave. However, for the reflective wave, it's either in phase, if this term is positive, that is when alpha times beta is smaller than 1, or it's out of phase when this term is negative, when alpha and beta are bigger than 1. We can explore Brewster's angle, which is when our reflection is equal to 0. In this case, if you notice this, this Fresnel equation, is when 1 is equal to alpha and beta. Uh, so we can equate these two things, make alpha equal to the inverse of beta, or we can put the definition already, the ratio of the permeabilities. And we're going to change the index of refractions using Snell's law in order to get the sine of the transmitted wave over the sine of the incoming wave. And we're going to change alpha with its definition the cosine